Hi, this is Scott with 4D Tech. Today we are in a 13 to 15 body style Ford Taurus that came equipped with Sync 2 My Ford Touch but lacks navigation. We will be installing the navigation upgrade kit from 4D Tech for Sync 2 in this vehicle. We'll need a few basic tools to perform this upgrade a Phillips screwdriver. a 7mm nut driver and some plastic dash removal tools. The nut driver and the plastic dash removal tools are available on our website for your convenience. Let's get started. First we need to remove these vinyl wrapped strips down each side of the console. We'll grab one of our dash removal tools and start back near the edge and pry up between the console and the panel and work our way up. We'll spin it around and there's a little tab on the top of this connector, disconnect the connector and we'll set this panel out of the way. Now we need to remove this side the same way between the console and the, and the thin panel, put our dash removal tool and pry up to get it started and then we'll work our way up. And then we can just pull forward to pop this loose. Now this start stop switch we're actually going to pop the whole switch out of the panel so that we're able to turn the vehicle on and off as we need to move the shifter out of the way so there's these tabs around it that we're just going to pry away and work our way around and pop the switch out and we'll set this panel aside as well. Next we need to remove all these seven millimeter screws up through. There's eight, 10, 12 up through the sides here. We're going to take them all out because each of these panels overlap each other. With all those screws out, we are going to start removing these panels by lifting up on them and backing them out of the way. In order to get this one back, we're gonna to have to turn on the ignition. So we'll just tap the button twice without holding the brake pedal in, and then hold the brake pedal in and move the shifter backwards. Then we can move the shifter plate backwards. You're gonna to have to pull up and move it back and we'll get this coin tray and outlet out of the way. This kind of has to pop off these upper tabs and then pull down and come out. Then we'll spin it around and push this tab in right here where our thumb is and unplug it and we'll set this out of the way. Now we can move the shifter back into park and shut the vehicle back off. Next, we need to remove the two seven millimeters down here and the two seven millimeters here. With those four screws out, next we're gonna take our dash removal tool and move our way up to this grill up top. This may be either a speaker grill or a coin tray depending on the trim level of your vehicle. And we'll slide, we'll get the right dash tool here with the thin piece on it to slide in between and release the clips. With the clips released, we'll put this out of the way. 
and we'll remove these two seven millimeter screws. With those screws out of the way, we need to remove these panels on each side that overlap the vents because there's screws out here that hold this panel in. This is a lot of panels and a lot of screws, but it's just a lot of disassembly and reassembly. Um, so next, we'll need to pop off this cover right here, and we'll just grab a hold of it and pull forward. The bottom under dash panel overlaps these little covers, so you'll want to pry down on that to get it out and just let that hang out of the way. And then there's a screw behind here holding this panel in. Next, we'll need to come over here. You won't be able to see within the camera image, but this same panel on this side of the steering wheel needs to pop out. And you'll just pull down on the bottom dash panel a little bit to unclip that. And this one has a screw right behind the lower dash panel. With that screw out, we're gonna pop this panel off and let that hang out of the way. Now this instrument cluster surround is going to be loose and just needs to be unclipped. And we'll just work our way all the way around pulling it out. And it just really needs to be loose so we can look behind here. You don't have to pull it all the way out. It's, it's almost impossible to, so you'll just push it out of the way. If you get it out of the way, there's a screw here and a screw here that has to come out that holds that side of the vent in. And then next we'll move over to this side and this whole cover here has to pop off. There's nothing behind it. It's just a couple clips. We'll get underneath it with our dash removal tool and use our fingers and the removal tool to release it. We'll put that clip back on that popped off. We'll put it back on the panel before we replace it on reassembly. Sometimes those plastic clips just pop out. It's not a big deal. We'll take out these two seven millimeter screws next. With those two screws out, we have all the screws removed to get this panel loose. So we'll pull this panel forward towards us and you'll just need to pull on this instrument cluster panel enough to slide the vent by. Once you've done that, we'll swing this around and there's a single connector here that needs to be unplugged. The clip is on the bottom where you see my finger and we'll unplug it. and we'll set this panel aside. Next, we need to take out the four screws that retain the screen and the sink module in the dash. Now, one thing you don't need to worry about is the screws, the sizes of them. Every single screw that we took out is the same exact screw, same exact size. So you don't have to worry about which one went where. Next, we'll pop this screen out, spin it around, and there's two connectors. Put our thumb, push down on this clip to unplug the USB cable. This main connector will push the little retainer in front of the gray lever in with our finger and pull the gray lever towards us until it comes unplugged. What we need to do is replace this module on the back of the screen with the navigation equipped one from 4D Tech. 
You can do this by setting it down on a, uh, on a soft surface to remove the module. In this case, for the sake of this video, I'm going to throw a cloth in this opening and set the screen here. Next, we need to take out these four Phillips screws. With those four Phillips screws out, we'll pull this module off. We'll bring in the navigation equipped one from 4D Tech and put it in its place. Now these alignment pins line up to here with the connector. Make sure you're not trying to put it on the screen upside down. It'll only go on one way. We'll push it in until it clips in and replace the screws. With the four screws replaced, attaching the module to the back of the screen, we're going to spin this around and reconnect it. Take this main connector, put a shit back in the same way it came out, make sure the lever is all the way open, start pushing it in until the lever moves, and then push the lever the rest of the way to draw the connector in. USB cable with the clip facing up plugs back into the black port. If there is a gray port on your module, it is unused. Now we'll set this back in the opening and we'll replace the four screws we took out earlier. Now we need to get our large bezel back on. First, we'll reconnect the connector. Now remember the clip was facing down. We'll plug that back in. Then spin it around. And we need to work it back into the opening. You might have to push on the vent to push it past the edge of the screen. You wanna just make sure you don't scratch up the edge of the screen doing it. And you'll just kinda of have to move it around until you get those vents aligned to push in. And then you'll be able to push the panel back in. Now I'm going to replace the two screws here and the two screws here. We'll push this instrument cluster surround back in place. If you push it up, clip it up top first, then the side clips will line up and we'll replace the screw right here. And then we'll replace this panel here. You just pull down on the lower panel to get the clip out of the way. Push it in until it clips in. We had the wire caught for the start-stop switch in there. So if something's not quite going in right, you'll pull it back apart, see what's hanging it up, and then try again. Now it snapped in right that time. Now we'll replace the one on this side that you can't see in the camera and snap that back in as well. And we'll replace the screw also. And then we'll snap the lower dash panel back in. Now for the panel above the glove box. I'll grab the clip we lost earlier, snap it back onto the panel, and then we'll snap this panel back on. Now we need to replace the two screws here and the two screws underneath that held this bezel on. Okay, next we'll replace the two screws up top here. And we'll snap this grill back in place.
now we'll just tap our start button twice without pushing the brake and then pushing the brake so we can move the shifter back so we can get this tray back in. Remember that the tray had the plug plugged into it. And then now we have the shifter back in place and shut off the vehicle. Now with all these panels set into place, we need to replace the 12 screws we took out earlier. With all the screws in, we simply need to replace these side strips that went down each side of the console. On this one, we wanna make sure we plug this connector back in. Plug them in till they click, make sure the connectors are plugged in nice and firm. We'll push up here first and then work our way back. And then for this side, we'll just reinsert the start stop switch. As long as the wording is right side up, it'll snap right in. And same thing, we push that in, clip it all the way back. Last thing you need to remember is to install the SD map card that came with the kit. There's the SD card slot back here in the console. You'll take it label side up, slide it into the card slot till it clicks and locks in. With that in place, we'll start up the vehicle. And now you see that we have exactly what we had on the screen before, except for in the upper right hand corner, instead of it saying information, it says navigation. Being that we first, inst that we first installed the kit, the navigation will take a little while to load the first time. And now you see we have our maps as well. And that's what it takes to install the navigation upgrade kit for Sync 2 in the 13 to 15 Ford Taurus. I'm Scott with 4D Tech. Thank you for checking out our video.